I'm not going to lie, my prepping is a bit slow at the minute because I haven't really prepped anything for six months. Uh, I'm obviously getting just back into the swing of things. I've had a, a rest, shall we say, from prepping food. Right, so what I typically do for seasoning for chicken, um, or for most of my beef, is pink Himalayan salt, garlic, uh, paprika, or mixed herbs. They're the, the go-tos for me. I don't use any sauce or marinade, marinade in it. Nice and easy. Today. I hate to think how many chickens I've eaten in my life. I'm 21 years I've been doing this. You won't think it, you think I'd be a big but 21 years. Man. You always ate the same way with all of your preps as well from back when you first started. Yeah, so I typically, yeah, I've always eaten the same meals whilst I'm in. Prepping, uh, and I'll tell you in a second. I'm pour this. And... Yeah, so I typically eat the same meals, and the key to being not getting bored of the same meals is have variation through the day. So I typically have two salmon fillets a day, two fillet steaks a day, three chicken breasts a day, four eggs and an oatmeal. Uh, so they're all different meals through the day. Um, that way I don't get bored. A lot of people will just go chicken and rice, chicken and rice, chicken and rice. And just because it's quick and easy to get everything done at the same time. But um, that's when you soon, you can create problems as well, digestion problems when you're just having the same food types. But also, how repetitive that be? And it's not something you're going to want to do 365 days a year. I love the meals I eat. Uh, I enjoy what I eat. I think that's key to longevity in bodybuilding is, is being able to eat what you what you enjoy. This is a great question. Craig Williams is a good friend of mine and he's just put, how much caffeine do you have per day? So, Craig, I haven't told anybody this, but I am caffeine free. So I basically um, went through a stage last year, everyone knew what I was doing last year. I was literally flat out, up 18 hours of each day but I was still prepping for a show, so I couldn't eat any more food because I'd, I'd had my calories for the day. So what I was doing is I was turning to caffeine for that energy, for that pick me up to keep me going. So um, I was typically having three, four coffees a day. Then I was having pre-workout before I trained. I was having like a rain can, um, energy drinks, that sort of thing. And when I finished prepping, it just carried on because I was so used to that. I wasn't getting the same like hits and the same caffeine kicks that I um yeah that I just carried on having all that and I saw a friend of mine posted something I was like that is so true and it's something I used to do years back was cut it all out at the start of prep because you shouldn't need it the amount of food we're eating you shouldn't need caffeine to have that pick me up or that sweet uh, energy can so I cut it out three weeks ago when I started prep and all I've been drinking is water my greens and EAAs and a peppermint tea. No fizzy drinks, which is not a problem. If you want fizzy drinks, you can have them. It's not really gonna affect the way you look. Uh, but I just wanted to go cold turkey. I wanted to go old school, which I used to do back in the day, back when I first started bodybuilding. Um, and yeah, so I am, apart from my peppermint tea in the morning, I am caffeine free. Um, I feel good for it. I must admit though, the first four, two weeks, no, two weeks ago, the first, I'd say three or four days, I really did struggle. I was having like, I felt like I was shaking, I had headaches, it just didn't feel right. And uh, yes, Craig, you might laugh now, mate, but you're gonna be living on caffeine when that, that baby comes. <laughs> Not long now, mate, so no more sleep. I'm preparing for Mr. Olympia, India, and I've for six months, so my weight takes time. I'm assuming 20 grams of protein. Uh, so that's, I think that's, that's ample. I take 220 grams of protein, roughly, a day, but I'm weighing uh, in kilograms is just under 100, 100 kilograms. 
So 200 is ample. Uh, if you're getting the right amount of, of fuel through your carbs and your fats as well, that's, that's perfectly fine. You can only absorb so much anyway. This is a common knowledge anyway, but you would just piss it out and waste it and store it as fat if uh, you have too much of it. So I better get this on because we're going to be here forever if not. Too busy talking, aren't I? My bad. What else are you saying, Will? Talk to me. Oh, you plan on tackling your food while you're away on holidays? That pretty much going to stay the same. Oh, nice. Just want to say that, yeah. So I um, yeah. So it is this holiday. Well, it is a holiday. I've actually booked a villa, so which means I can cook all my own meals, um, and I'm self-sufficient. So. I've, I've been very tactical in that. Uh, I haven't gone for an all-inclusive with temptation and not been able to know what's in the food. So that's that's the main thing, it's just making sure, making sure I can cook my meals because that's the be all and end all is, is nutrition. I've already sourced um, a gym local. I've got my car sorted so I can get there and back. We're actually in the mountains, so I'm looking forward to going out, doing trail, Say like running, trail running, or like trail fast walking, fast walking. Fast walking. Um, I'm probably not quite at running yet. <laughs> but I'm getting a bit jealous because everyone seems to be running everywhere. And it's a bit crazy at the minute, and I'm terrible at it. What else we're saying? Um, I've got you, my boy, I've got you. It's probably not the most conventional pre workout meal, and everyone's going to have a good cause of right stir when I have it. But it's never done me any wrong, and I've always had it. I'll tell you the same when I start to make it. Have you tried anything in the past that hasn't quite worked in terms of like nutrition, like fasting or paleo and something like that? Have yeah. you kind of just stuck to the same thing? Yeah, so I have, um, over the years, I've uh, definitely experimented with different like uh, diet plans and stuff like that. And one thing I did try, which was a bit crazy, is obviously uh, no carbs, zero carbs. We soon realised that was the worst thing for me because my body requires a lot of carbs to, to hold weight to, to maintain size and I created so many unnecessary problems because of just trying to follow the trend at the time um, to the point where I was at Sherwood Forest which was the local thing here and because I'd gone for about only on my third day of zero carbs whereas my lowest carb day when prepping is 300 grams so I still have more quiet by a lot even at 300 grams I'm struggling and I'm fatigued and that's a, a low point for me so to go with zero by the third day I, I could hardly keep my head up and my wife was saying to me what are you doing like you've never done this before like why are you doing this now and I couldn't really answer it I was just like you don't understand this <laughs> but to the point where I just I remember sitting down I said I've got to sit down I don't feel good and I just was out cold uh, slept for about two hours woke up she was not happy with me at all uh, she just went this needs to change, and I, and I agreed with at that point. Started introducing carbs again, felt amazing, body was reacted really well, and it was back to my normal self. So that is definitely why I stuck to what I stuck to. I've never gone like vegetarian or anything like that because I'm addicted to meat, I like meat. Yeah. Do you eat at the same time, or is it just as long as you're getting five, six meals in or whatever? Yeah, so my meals now are not regularly on time. Uh, they used to be literally by the minute and my stomach tells me when I need to eat by the minute. So, um, but with having two kids, uh, a lot of responsibilities and craziness in my life, I found out it doesn't really make much of a difference to me. Like, as long as I get my five meals in the day and, and the calories are the same or the inputs the same, the outputs the same, um, I can navigate through um, home life through everything by just getting it in as and when I can. Right guys, so my second meal of the day, hey, get this guy. Oh, yeah. So my second meal of the day, which is typically before I train, and then I know you're all going to curse, but I have four whole eggs, and I have four whole eggs the whole time anyway, um, with half an avocado and ten rice cakes. Sounds weird, I know, but I'm still getting a decent amount of protein, fats and carbs, big calorie meal before I train. And I 
how rice every meal, I just can't go to cook white potato, sweet potato. So just to swap it up a little bit, I have rice cakes. Being considerably in the top five. So yeah, I didn't want to waste their time because the year before I had a one year old, she was heavily pregnant, Amy, and she, they came out to support me in Vegas when, um, when everywhere was shut in December. It was just miserable for them. Like they had nothing to do. He was bored, fast asleep at the finals. So I said, look, let's, let's book a holiday after and we're going to celebrate whatever the outcome is after. Not knowing I was actually going to win it. But, um, so yeah, so I owe it to them this year to, uh, to repeat, get the second one with, with friends and family around me. So there's a big team coming this year. Uh, and it's, it's actually quite unbelievable, quite humbling to, to, to see a lot of friends who are not into bodybuilding, not into this world, are coming to support me and show, show their support, which is just incredible because it's not a two hour flight down the road and 20 quid, is it? It's, it's a lot of money to go to Las Vegas, to come to the Olympia and immerse yourself in something that you're not really interested in. So yeah, I'm massively taken back by it. There's pressure on that, obviously, because I don't want to not be able to perform for it. But I'm in the best place possible for it. So I'm number one going into it. It's mine to lose. So as long as I, as long as I do everything that I typically do and more and come in at my best, then it should be good enough to retain it. Um, no, it is good enough to retain it. It's not good, no, I don't know. So, yes, you've just seen what I've just seen there. Soy sauce. It's always in every meal of mine. It's just my little, little secret weapon. And yes, it's high in salt. But for me, it always works well because I have sodium in every meal. I prep with pink salt, I have a little bit of uh, soy sauce on my uh, rice. When I get to stage, all I have to do the day before is take a few, um, a few soy sauces out of the meals and I react so well, I drop water really quick because I'm depleting, uh, well, I'm, I'm decreasing a bit of sodium in my body and it just draws all the water out of me. So um, that's my excuse for using it. Plus I, I really like it as well. Uh, well. Do you prep your own meals or does Amy prep your meals? So I prep all of my meals. Um, I just, it's not that I don't, no, I don't teach anybody <laughs> saying it. Like even my wife, even my wife, like I say, she's amazing, she offers to help. Um, but I'd just like to know I've seen everything that goes into everything. Weird, I know, but at least I've got no excuses. I can't blame anybody if something goes wrong. Right, so, maybe you can hear me, but I'm just going to poach the eggs now. <laughs> Ryan, do you wear rubber gloves to clean the bathroom? <laughs> I bet oh, this is a little kinky question. I've got my marigolds out. Uh, I actually don't clean the bathroom anymore. That's really bad in it, but. I had to do it, it was one of my chores growing up as a kid and I absolutely detest it. I just, yeah, I just can't do it. I'll do everything else, just cleaning, I don't know, I keep everywhere tidy and I clean up around me, but yeah, I have a little bit of help, I've got to clean, I'm not going to lie. All right. It's where everyone judges me now, don't they? <laughs> Who is your favourite bodybuilder? What, currently or overall? I would say... It's hard because it's a typical like, answer this is, but Jay Cutler in his mannerisms, his professionalism, his work ethic, just overall great guy. The way he remembers people's names, I know it sounds simple, but he has a lot of time for his fans. He's always the first person into the expos, the last person to leave, and he'll always give everybody the same amount of time. So massive respect, and I've always tried to mimic my career and my work ethic around him. Uh, regards to looks wise, I would say um, Flex Wheeler was the guy I always looked, not that I ever wanted to look like Flex because I was never wanted to be an open class bodybuilder, but his symmetry and his stage presence, he had everything and it was a shame that he didn't get an Olympic title, but 
it was just the wrong era for him. Any other area, he would have cleaned up, but it was a very strong area he was in. Um, and then, if you're on about current day, got a lot of time for Samson, because obviously he's UK based. Um, I've seen him come up and his work ethic is great, like in the gym and uh, the size he's packing on is just phenomenal, it's inspirational to see. Looks wise, I've always loved Hanny, I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna be diplomatic here, I've always liked Hanny's uh, condition. He's grainy, rock hard, clean, he's got striations through his quads, everything where it's a pleasing, clean look. So I've always uh, admired that. And then obviously Derek Lunsford, the champ champ, he is just the overall, like he's got the size, the shape is phenomenal, um, and the condition. And he's going to be hard to beat. Like I say, he was, he looked amazing last year, but each year he is improving so much. I hate to think what he's going to look like this year. Uh, yeah, right, I'm going to crack on. So, I don't know if you can see, got the chicken breasts, you can see there. Got chicken breast cooked off. That, they were 13 minutes. Obviously, I'm talking to you guys, but that was 13 minutes. The rice is, is cooked off, finished. The veg I haven't done because I'm too busy chatting to you, but typically, 13 minutes is all done. And what I do, I weigh all my meals post, post cooking. A lot of people try and weigh it before, which is really hard work. I don't know how you do that to try and weigh stuff before you cook it. Um, I typically prep everything. Put them in big tubs in the fridge, so all my chicken, all my rice, all my steaks, all my salmons, everything like that, all my veg. And then when I want to get my meals, I weigh them out each each time I, uh, I eat my meal. I'm going to show you this now, because my, my eggs in there were cooked. So, it's weird because a friend of mine, Johnny, my physio, he nicknamed this a poor man's McMuffin. But, I'm not being funny, how's it a poor man, I've been thinking about it quite quite a lot, now how's it a poor man's avocado cost yeah. more than a McMuffin? Exactly, an avocado costs more than a meat nose, <laughs> costs more than a, a McMuffin, so yeah, I challenge that Johnny, this is a posh McMuffin, a healthier posh McMuffin. Right, so, got my avocado. Are yeah. there any foods that you don't particularly like that you just force yourself to eat just because you know you should probably eat it? What on prep? Uh, just in general. Do you? Um, so after you went to Korea, did, was there anything oh. out there that you kind of went, that's a bit too much? Yeah, so I recently been to Korea. That was hard for me. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to be respectful. I wanted to immerse myself in their culture, which is a lot to obviously their food. Again, yeah. very basic in the UK. Yeah, the first day I was picking a live eel out of a tank and literally they just pulled it out, cut its head off and put it in front of me. And like the tail was still moving. Oh, it was, yeah, it was an experience, should we say. Although obviously there's a lot of protein in, in, in an eel and it's good for you. Yeah, I struggled with that, I must admit. I'm not a massive fish eater, to be honest, but I have salmon every day because I know the health benefits to it. And as you start dieting, as you're getting closer, everything tastes a million dollars. So that salmon becomes one of my favorite meals. Kind of messed up here, that's for the pressure. You see you guys, I've overcooked it, but it'll do. There we go. <laughs> that looks a bit suspect. What you typically do, if you can see that, oh. yeah, you've got your four poached eggs and the avocados, and then we make it to a McMuffin. There we go, there we have it. I'm actually scared to eat this in front of you now. Voila, that's my second meal. So week four of the prep. Is it? We know it's not week four of the prep. <laughs> it feels like week four. <laughs> now week three of prep. Uh, today, obviously we're down at RG Fit, training out here every day. We're hitting chest today, chest and triceps. Everything's going as planned. 
We're about 16 pounds over stage weight. So each week, dropping a pound. First exercise, just still on the warm up now. Just getting um, a full stretch, getting blood into the chest before we start doing some compound like free weight work. Hey. Hey. Oh. 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 All in the chest, come on. Hey. Good, again. Hey. Hey. Nice. Whoa. Ooh. So we've got uh, amino acids, essential amino acids, and we've got creatine in there, and we've got 100 grams of multidextrin. So yeah, still quite high on the carbs whilst I'm training. It's just a great way of getting carbs in whilst I'm this far out. Perfect. It gives me something to play with as we get close to the show. I can start taking carbs out of these drinks, which I won't notice a big difference on. Um, obviously, the calories will come down. Hey. 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 Quality. Hey. Decent. Oh. Hey. Work your set up. No. Oh, yeah, quality. We adapted the exercise on the last set. So we went for 10 upright, and then we leant right over it, lightened the weight slightly, and just went for double the reps over it. Just meaning that I can get more into it. Um, yes, you'll start to swing a little bit, but I just, each exercise I ever do, the last set, I just want to make sure I've done everything I can before I move on. And a, a drop set or a triple drop set is that for me. It, it helps me massively before I move on. Fucking you know, that shoulder. Yeah, here we go then. Together. There if you need. Good. Solid. Don't come near you now. <laughs> come on. <clears throat> Let's go. <clears throat> so, uh, second exercise was incline dumbbell press. Didn't go crazy heavy on here. We just did like one warm up set and then three working sets, just keeping it like a nice medium weight, somewhere between 10 and 12 reps. Just a nice lot of control, feeling it all in the chest. And now we're actually going on to another incline press. Again, not moving crazy amounts of weights. It's all about getting that mind muscle connection and really feeling it where you're supposed to feel it. Uh, so we're going on incline barbell press now. Yeah, what he said. Come on up. Hey. Uh, hey. Right. Stay with me then. Yeah. I'm alright, legs in. Yeah. Uh. Yep. Go on, and again, and again. 
Wicked. Negatives. Got to love them. So, now Josh has already explained about incline barbell press. But as you can see, we're not going for one rep maxes. It's not max heavyweight. Um, quite light, in fact. But we're going for 10 to 12 time under tension type of reps. So, three down, three up. And then we're going for negatives. So, if you get into the eight to nine reps and it's too easy, slow it down even more, tense your chest even more, contract it, make it harder to get to those 10 reps to failure. And then this is where your partner comes in and helps with the negatives. You should only get about three, really, if you're at that breaking point. So 13 reps in total. Okay, we're gonna do one more, one more, ready, set, press. Here we go, slow it down, real slow. Yes. Oh. Wicked. Oh. Oh. But all it is on chest, I feel these type of exercises, lightweight, more controlled over any type of weight, heavyweight. Whenever I use heavyweight on chest, my shoulders take over and end up uh, over empowering it with my shoulders. So yeah, all that was in my chest, nowhere else. But we want. Nice, mate, good. Here we go, chuck them in, let's go. Yep. No. No. Wicked. Oh. What a set. Fuck you know. I'm going to do one more on there. So we're just doing a last exercise on chest. Um, so it's flat, plate loaded machine, and we're just doing single arm. So unilateral work, just making sure, again, we've got nothing left before we move on to triceps. Wicked. Yeah. That's a wrap on chest and triceps. Now we're going into that dreaded posing room for physique update. Third update. Let's go. 218 pounds fasted in the morning, uh, which is 16 pounds over stage weight with 15 weeks out. So basically, time to drop a pound a week on average. Um, but this is where we're at. I've got a lot of work to do in my midsection. I'm just not at that stage yet of hitting it three times a week like I normally do. I'm only hitting it on a Sunday. So I need to start incorporating, and I think it's gonna be this coming week, where we introduce a second abdominal workout core, just to get it 
under control again. I tried to do a vacuum a few days ago and it just didn't work and I was like, we've got some work to do. Oh, horrible. <laughs> A lot of work to do. <laughs>